Guys, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to our weekly Premier League predictions. And this is week eight. Now, guys, we do have a bit of a disclaimer for you. Uh, because of work commitments, we are recording this before the following Chelsea game. And we are also recording it for obvious reasons before the Luton and Burnley game. However, as you can see on the screen, for the second week in a row and the second time this season, I have not only beat Scott in last week's predictions, I've smashed him. Scott, how do you feel? The comeback's I mean, coming on, in, I told you. I'm still in the lead, so that's all that matters. I don't know what's more criminal, the uh, the vest that you're wearing or the fact that um, <laughs> you, you're celebrating the fact of being behind in the overall weekly predictions. But let's I, move I on. Have to, no, 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 no. I have to respond to that. For those of you who don't know, <laughs> I live in Asia. It's 30 degrees every day. I'm not one of those white trash people. It's very hot. I need to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you need to just put it out there. And you guys, killed me. let's go on with the predictions. Then we're going to start off with Luton, who take on Spurs. And of course, things are looking a little bit more better for Luton. They've got their first Premier League win against Everton. And, you know, yeah. they're coming home game against Spurs. I feel they might feel they might be able to do something special there. You know, I think Kenilworth Road, that is where they're really going to put the pressure on. But Spurs don't look Spursy, and we keep saying that. They do look a different animal this season. Controversial, controversially, of course, they did get the win against Liverpool, but look, they're still only them and their North London rivals, Arsenal, are unbeaten in the Premier League now this season. So I think even though Luton might give it a massive good try, I still expect Spurs to get the job done. So I've gone Spurs three, but Luton do get one home goal. goal so Luton won, Spurs three. Well, I'm glad you added that at the end because I've got Spurs 3-0. I wasn't convinced with Spurs when <laughs> Liverpool went down to 9. I really think they should have uh, won that game before yeah. the last minute. Yeah. However, sorry Luton, awesome result last week. I'm going 3-0 Spurs. Uh, we move on to Burnley, are at ho who are at home to Chelsea. And as we said at the start of the video, we don't know how Chelsea got on against Fulham. We don't know how Burnley got on against Luton. But you've got to say... Burnley, listen, they may have won against Luton, we don't know, but before this, awful start to the season with the awful. amount of hype they had from company coming up. Yeah. He was going to be the next big thing. He was he was going to take the steps that Gerrard never took. Gerrard was going to go from Rangers to Villa, Liverpool, and we th and obviously that didn't work out. And people yeah. are saying company's going to go from Burnley, maybe somewhere else, and take over Pep. And for the for the moment, you've got to say, God further away than Gerard going to Liverpool. Yeah. Um, a bit tough to call, as, again, we don't know the re the recent results um, from a few days ago. But Chelsea have got to win a game, surely. I'm just so. going to go 2 I'm going to go 2-1 Chelsea. You've gone 2-1. I've actually gone for 2-0, but I completely agree. At some point, Chelsea have got to win. And even though they are away from yeah. home, this is surely one that they do need to get over the line. Let's move on to what could be a really interesting game. And it's Everton who take on Bournemouth. And pressure is yeah. back on Sean Dyche. You know, we've seen uh, fans calling for his head, obviously, after what it did seem like he turned things around. But then they go and lose to Luton. And obviously, uh, you know, there is a real worry that Dyche may not be the man for Everton. But you do have to wonder. They keep finding themselves in this position where they're fighting relegation battle after relegation battle. How long can they keep it at bay until one year is finally the year? Well, they might be hoping that Bournemouth are a team that they can keep down there and drag down there because despite spending a lot in the transfer market, despite changing the manager, it's not been a really rosy second season for uh, Bournemouth so far in the Premier League. And of course, Bournemouth fans might say, well, we have got players to come in. Obviously, Alex Scott that they brought, um, Tyler Adams as well. They brought those in knowing that they were obviously injury, injured when they brought them. They could come back and make a difference. But for this game, with it being at Goodison, I'm going to say the points are going to be shared. I've actually gone for a 1-1 in this one. I think Dyche will just go out not to lose. I think because if he does lose, his job wow. could be on the line. Oh, I've gone for a Bournemouth uh, win for the reason that Everton are at home. Four home games this season and they've lost all four. Mm, I mean, true. they've lost to Wolves, they've lost to Fulham. Yeah, one of them was Arsenal as well. That's kind of, you know, expected. But if they were away, I probably would have said uh, a win or a draw. But now I've gone 2-1 Bournemouth. 
Moving on to Fulham, who are at home to Brentford. And as we say, Fulham, um, congratulations on the win uh, against Chelsea or uh, commiserations. We don't know. We're <laughs> recording this video. I'm just going to say it. Sheffield United look awful. I thought before the season they would finish above Luton, but go down. I think they go down bottom. I really do. This, I, I see that, something uh... about... Yeah, I see something about them. I really do, mm. Luton, especially with Morris up front. He's a Premier League striker. Yeah. If they go down, yeah. he'll stay. But Sheffield United, I just don't see a lot. And I, I think uh, Fulham do this quite easy. I'm going to say 3-1. I've gone for a similar goal difference, but I have got for, uh, I've gone for Fulham to get the job done. But I've not even gave Sheffield United a goal. I think, you know, Fulham okay. will just be, it'll be a standard Fulham win, won't it? I've gone 2-0. Let's move on to a Fair game enough. nowhere. It might not be a standard win. It's Man United who take on Brentford and Tom's gone by. This would be one of these games where... This isn't play. easy. Yeah. This is not nil, easy. 4-0 United. They'll get the job done. <laughs> well, they're not getting the job done. Um, one thing you would say, though, is they did lose to Palace, but they kind of remind me of Chelsea in a way. And Man United fans will not take that as a compliment anymore. But they look kind of like no. a team that's playing well but just cannot put the goal uh, ball in the back of the net. You know, those forward players yeah. for me aren't stepping up and they're going to have to at home against a team uh, like Brentford, who are just not quite looking the same this season. They've, they've obviously had a few injuries. They started the season as well, let's not forget, but they just seem to have took the gas off a uh, the foot off the gas a little in the last few games. Have, I yeah. think for that reason... I think United might just edge it. I've gone for a very, this is a very narrow, but I've gone for a very narrow 2-1 victory. Do you know what I said on my predictions last week when it was United Palace? I said, I'm going 2-0 United, but I have no idea why. I was so tempted yeah. to say Palace. <laughs> yeah. And I've just done the exact same thing this week. On I'm a moron. I've actually gone 2-1 United as well. But yeah, to lose four of your first seven games is disgusting. We've both no. gone 2-1. Oh, sorry, Brentford, you may win. On We don't know. Yeah, much. yeah, I agree. Uh, coming, <laughs> coming on to Brighton, who really uh, just, they, they've got to bounce back. And what else can you say? No. But they come up against a Liverpool team that, let me give you my scoreline first. I'm going to do this the opposite way around than we normally do. I'm going to say 3-1 Liverpool because okay. I think they're going to have such a rocket up their backside after the absolute disgrace from the officials uh, at the weekend against Spurs. They're going to feel like, do you know what? We had the ref against us, the linesman, VAR, True. which they did in fairness. We had mm. nine men for a large part of the game, 10 men for a larger part of the game. And Spurs couldn't break them down and True. Liverpool had a few chances. So I think they'd have taken a lot of heart from that. I really do. And I think they'll come back better. If Brighton would have lost, say, 3-1 or 4-1, that's one of those results where you think, let's bounce back. But 6-1, yeah. that's not just a bad defeat. That's a that's very a heavy humiliate. defeat. It's yeah. heavy. And I just don't think they'll bounce back as we may think they will. So that's why I've gone 3-1 to Liverpool. I can see exactly where you're coming from. I kind of agree with all the points you've made, but I've gone for the complete opposite, actually. I've gone Brighton really, to be wow. the ones to bounce back. I just have a feeling that okay. we've seen this happen before. Let's not forget that Brighton have been he beaten heavily. Not as, as heavily, but have been beaten heavily this season, yep. and they did come and bounce back. And I was just thinking, as you yep. said, two red cards for Liverpool, Can that affect, that might just affect them a little bit. The so from well... Th so just a one quick thing on that. It was Yotta who they've got an abundance of talent for. Yeah, and of I agree. course, Jones. So it if it was a if it was Van Dyke again or even Allison, I'd probably mm. edge towards Brighton. But because it was Yotta, they've got a lot of attacking talent. That's kind of No, I get that. I get that. Yeah, I I've just yeah. got a feeling I've gone Brighton being the home team, two one two. Brighton. Let's move on to another game, which for me, uh, I think a lot of fans will be looking at this as one of the games of the week. It is West Ham Absolutely. who take on Newcastle. And a game for me, which I think can be, it's going to be one of those that's going to be very interesting to watch. You know, two good teams. Um, I actually won't be watching it because I'll be uh, at good old Molyneux watching Wolves Villa. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll be one of them. I'll try and catch up on if it does look like it's been a really good game. And I do expect it to be. I think these are two teams that have really got the ability to go at each other. Newcastle in the Premier League, 18 goals already scored this season. Of course, there's the Crazy. caveat that it got like half of them against one team. But West Ham as yeah. well, 13 goals scored. This is two teams that can yeah. score. I think if two teams are at, the, that are at the best as well, can bring a real spectacle. 
And you know what? I'm, I'm expecting goals. I've actually gone for a draw, but I've gone for a two-all draw. I do think it'll be a very entertaining game. I was thinking along the same lines. I, I echo yeah. everything you said. <laughs> I've gone 1-1, one, one, but it did cross mm. my mind 2-2. Two, two. I even thought about 3-3 three, three just to try and do something a bit different. So different. <laughs> yeah, because I just think there's going to be... I, I think it's going to be a draw, but I was thinking, could there be an absolute goal fest here? But I did. Yeah. I'm going to say I backed out a little bit and I went for a save. 1-1. <laughs> one, one. Uh, coming up is our team, Wolverhampton Wanderers and Scott, to be a Wolves fan. <laughs> To, to draw against Luton and give them their first point of the season, to then lose a 2-0 lead against a good championship good. team, good switch, I will good. say. Good team. But when you're 2-0 up after 20 minutes and you lose 3-2, that's not great. <laughs> and then you beat the treble winners, Man City. Not only did they drop the first points of the season, if they lose, honestly, yeah. Scott, uh, yeah. being a Wolves fan, now, do we go to Villa and lose three in a? Uh, sorry, do we lose three in a at home against Villa, or do we take it in? Well, it's For a good Villa team, make... isn't it? It's a very good Villa it's team. A very good Villa team. It's a Villa team that put six past Brighton. The same Brighton team that put six past us last season and put four past us at the Molyneux earlier yeah. this season. So, I, I love the Premier League. It's just brilliant. But. For those of you who don't know, maybe you're neutrals, Wolves have got a very good record against Villa, whether Villa were good and Wolves weren't as good, or even when Wolves were fighting for Europe and Villa were fighting relegation, we have a good record against them. However, with that being said, is this fence-sitting? I've got 1-1. One, one. I don't think that's fence-sitting. I think when you consider the fact that on paper, Villa should absolutely thrash us at the moment because they, they look should. absolutely unreal. But yeah. as you say, every year, even look back to last year, we always do Villa at Molyneux. There's just something about it. They don't like this game. So I've gone for a similar yeah. result. I've actually gone for 2-2. I think it could be just right. a very fiery Midlands derby. Of course, as well, you, it's a whole host of Midlands derbies because actually you've got West Brom who take on Birmingham this week as well. Um, so Is that right? Maybe wow. Yeah, an entertaining uh, the weekend. Midlands, for, uh, the Midlands is going to be the place to be if you want a night out. <laughs> unless you're the West Midlands police force, of course. But yeah. Oh, true, yeah. But yeah, I've gone for 2-2. Two, two. And let's um, let's move on to Arsenal to finish Last off game. then. You take wow. on Biggest game of the season? Um, Biggest game of the season so far, surely. Yeah, it's got to be. And I think for, like got City look like a bit of a wounded animal at the moment without Rodri, don't they? And of course, this will be the last game before he comes back. Um I think, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? Because we, we, we speak about the dominance of City, how great they've looked. Well, after that one defeat, you know, Spurs and Arsenal are right at the necks again. And, of course, if Arsenal do yeah. win this game, they go top of the table technically, won't they? So, you know, I think I think this has got a real chance for Arteta, especially with what's the... City, for me, at the moment, are a, a wounded lion. You know, they're, they're a lion, a massive lion, but they've, they're a little bit wounded. They've got um, De Bruyne out, Rodri out, and I, I think they're starting to feel a little bit of hurt from that, to be honest. Um, so I've actually backed Arsenal. I have. I've gone Arsenal 2, wow. Man City 1. Add, add John Stones to that list as well. And I know they've got great centre-backs. I know Guardiola can play there, Ake, Kanji. They've got unbelievable centre-backs, but John Stones has really taken that step up in that city team over the last 18 months, two years. And I think he's so underrated. He compliments Diaz so well. I did go City one, Arsenal two. And at the last minute, the last minute, I went two all. You've I had, gone I two just... all. Guys, yeah. I've just realized we missed out Palace versus Forest. I thought there was one we'd missed out. We did. Was we that my fault or yours? I don't know whose fault it was. I was just thinking, oh, no, what's going on here? But yeah, we missed out <laughs> Palace Forest. So let's quickly talk through that. I, I've just said Point with Palace Forest, I've said it's going to be a close game. Um, it could go either way. Palace got the huge win against United. And of course, you know, uh, with uh, Forest as well, they're a very good team. Um, it was interesting that uh, Cooper decided to drop Morgan Gibbs White this weekend to try and play the way that Brentford play. I feel yeah. like I'd like to have seen him play the way that Forrest play and keep with that formation. But let's be yeah. honest, this is a good mid-table clash. It could go either way. So I've gone down the fence. I've said 1-1. One, one. I've actually gone 2-2. Two, two. And I just want to give a quick shout-out to Roy Hodgson, the first Premier League manager to ever go to Old Trafford five times in a row and not lose. What a guy. 
Oh, what no, a way to finish nice. the win, the, the video oh, as well, nice. giving a good old Roy a shout out. Guys, if you do want to pause the video as well, we are going to bring up our scores now for you to have a look at. And why not hit that like button, subscribe to the channel as well for us, and hopefully we'll catch you on next week's predictions. Take care. Goodbye. <laughs>